This is the MMA 445 final project for the arcade joystick group consisting of Mauricio Camarena, Gregory Enriquez, and Wallace Muhammad. Our product of choice is the Industrious Lorenzo Eurostick, or IL stick as commonly referred to in the fighting game community. A widely used arcade joystick popularized in western arcades, the bat top design is one of the most iconic images of American arcades from the 1990s. Commonly described as being built like a tank, these sticks are still in use today in many machines and within hobbyist circles. Its popularization came from its use within the fighting game scene for machines such as Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 2, and Killer Instinct. Its design is similar to that of the Korean joysticks popularized for fighting games and is almost identical to the HAP competition joystick created by HAP Company, which merged with Suzo in 2005. The parts list for our product consists of the bat top joystick, the dust washer, spacer, hub, spring, z-stop, bracket, actuator, and e-clip. All part measurements were taken using a standard automotive grade vernier caliper, and all parts were modeled within SolidWorks 2016. All part models created in SolidWorks 2016 were then used to create 2D drawings of said components. All 2D drawing images were done using SOLIDWORKS 2016 and all dimensions are in millimeters. The materials of the components of the IL Eurostick consisted of ABS, nylon, and stainless steel. The bat top joystick consisted of a stainless steel stem surrounded by ABS plastic to provide grip to the user as well as avoid corrosion of the stem from sweat potential players might have. The dust washer itself was also ABS plastic and done in a color to match that of the bat top joystick. The spacer was the first component composed of nylon outside of the Z-stop and actuator. The spacer can be removed if the hub is to be mounted on a much thinner control panel than usual. The thinner the control panel, the higher up the joystick sticks out. This can be easily accommodated as the bat top joystick contains three notches so the e-clip can be changed depending on whether the spacer is in use or not. The hub is the main component of the arcade joystick mounted under the control panel. Within the center of the hub is an angled pocket to accommodate for the spacer, while under it is a pocket to accommodate for the spring. The angle pocket extends downward from the hub so that the spring may be placed over it and held snugly. From here, the end of the Z-stop with the four circular protrusions is placed within the other end of the spring, and the bracket is placed over these two in combination. The bracket is then screwed down to provide tension to the spring. Next, the actuator slides over the top of the Z-stop that protrudes out from the bracket. The actuator must now be pushed downwards against the force of the spring so that the e-clip may be slid into one of the notches on the bat top joystick. Upon the installation of the e-clip, the joystick is now completed. The finite element analysis that was performed on this arcade stick was done in Abacus CAE. So the first part that was analyzed was the joystick and the SOLIDWORKS file was imported from SOLIDWORKS into Abacus as an IGS file. There were two different materials that were input for this joystick. One was ABS plastic and the second was stainless steel 304. The ABS plastic was the blue part seen here in this photo and the stainless steel was the gray metal piece sticking out from the bottom. The Young's modulus that was input for ABS plastic was 2.25 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio was 0.35. For stainless steel 304, the Young's modulus was 193 gigapascals and the Poisson's ratio was 0.29. Because the joystick consists of two different parts, two separate parts were imported from SOLIDWORKS, the plastic handle and the steel shaft and they were imported separately and they were both meshed using TET elements and then the two parts were then combined using the tie constraint and this essentially allowed it to become one rigid body in the analysis. As seen in this photo, a distributed load of 222.411 newtons, which is approximately 50 pounds, was applied on a section of the handle 
This was to mimic the force of a person pulling or pushing on the arcade stick. 50 pounds is more of an overestimate. It allows us to see where the areas of high stress concentration are, and it allows us to see whether the handle can take a force in an extreme case. As seen in the photo, the arcade stick was constrained on the bottom face of the metal shaft, and again, the force was applied on half of the handle. The results show that most of the stress is located in the ridges of the metal shaft, but even so, the highest stress that the metal shaft feels is well below the yield stress of stainless steel 304, so this design is sufficient. An FEA analysis was then performed on the hub. Again, the part was imported into, from SOLIDWORKS into Abacus CAE as an IGS file. Similar to the joystick, the geometry was meshed with TET elements, and the material used for the hub was an ABS plastic. A distributed load of 222.411 newtons, which is the same as the force applied on the joystick, was applied to the inner part of the hub where the spacer and bat top would sit. The hub was constrained along its bottom and top where it would be mounted. The results show that the stress is localized to the space where the load was applied, and it shows that the hub does deform quite a large amount. However, again, the maximum stress is seen to be approximately 3.77 megapascals, which is well below the yield stress of ABS plastic, and again, this design would be sufficient for its purposes. The large deformation could be attributed to the overestimate of about 50 pounds being applied, which is an extreme case. The last FEA that was performed was on the spacer. Again, the part was imported into Abacus from SolidWorks. The material used for the spacer was nylon, and the properties for nylon are a Young's modulus of 3 gigapascals, Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3, a density of 1.15 grams per cubic centimeter, a plastic yield of 70 megapascals and an ultimate yield of 100 megapascals. Plasticity was applied to the spacer as it is a small piece and it is possible for it to plastically deform under such a large load of 50 pounds. The spacer was meshed using brick elements as can be seen in this photo. A distributed load of the same magnitude as the two previous parts was applied on the inside of the spacer as can be seen in the photo and it was constrained around the outside edge. The results show that most of the stress is located on the outside edge of the spacer, and similar to the last two parts, the maximum stress felt in the spacer is well below the yield stress for, the, for nylon. In conclusion, the three parts that were analyzed in Abacus were shown to be sufficient in terms of dimensions and material. None of the parts yielded, even under the overestimated load of 222.411 newtons, or approximately 50 pounds. One possible improvement on this design would be to remove material in certain areas of the part where there is excessive material. If we were to go about making improvements to these parts, we would have to redesign them and then remodel them in SOLIDWORKS, and we would also reperform the analysis in Abacus. This would ensure that our changes do not affect the strength of the part, and the part would still be able to withstand the forces that it would feel in real life. That is our final project for MMAE 445. Thank you for watching.